right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. Marsha Reynolds, President of Co-Visioning. How are you doing, Marsha? I'm good, thank you. Yeah. Glad to be here. And what, and what part of the country are you in today? I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. Ah, yeah, so nice, chilly Phoenix, Arizona, right? Yeah, right, <laughs> <In> Cal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was actually there briefly uh, a couple of weeks ago, and it always, whenever I go there in the summer, uh, it's always just amazing to watch the temperature in your car. <laughs> 116 degrees. It's <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm, here in, uh, I'm here in San Diego, where actually most of Arizona is in the summer. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> here a few weeks ago. <laughs> Excellent. So, uh, Dr. Marsha is Master of Teaching Others How to Engage in Powerful Conversations that Connect, Influence, and Activate Change When Emotions Are Strong. And let's face it, I mean, those are difficult times mm -hmm. to activate change when emotions are strong. So what we want to talk about is how leaders can turn those difficult, obviously emotional conversations into productive results. Mm -hmm. so, so first of all, um, Marsha, when you are having a difficult conversation, the the um, the defensiveness of whoever you're having the pers the difficult conversation with okay they normally immediately kick into a defensive mode and it doesn't matter how how evolved we think we are or whatever we still have that initial defensiveness so what's the first step in in addressing that or overcoming that well, a lot of times leaders uh, don't recognize that the moment they walk in the room, whatever emotions they're carrying are going to impact the person. So if they're disappointed or scared because there may be emotions in the conversation, um, you know, maybe angry at the person mm -hmm. that, you know, we have this uh, natural ability as mammals um, to sense danger. And so people will pick up that so you know they say oh they're they're going to be defensive well they probably will because you're expecting it you know so I always say to my leaders you know when you think about your team or even a, or an individual um, what happens when you enter the room mm. you know and and think about that and even more so what happens when you leave the room <laughs> right. You know, so um, you have to set the emotional tone going in before you even go in the room. Um, can you be curious and hopeful? Um, because that's, that's going to either open up or close down the person before you even open your mouth, which is another story <laughs> of what you say. <laughs> And interesting, if you think about it, what we're doing now, I mean, we're having a virtual conversation and with the, with the way work has evolved, there's a lot more people who are remote or dispersed or the organizations are, are dispersed. So a lot of these conversations aren't even taking place in a room face to face. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are taking place in, 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 um, you know, in virtual uh, arenas. Does that does that increase or decrease or change how you should how you approach things, or is it is it the same underlying philosophy? Well, you, yes, you still have to set your tone because it's going to come out even if you have a poker base and you think it doesn't in some way. Um, it, uh, it it will it will show, and and even if they don't sense what you're feeling, that the moment you start talking, then it's clear. You know, and that's, that's the problem. Most leaders, when they're uncomfortable, then they talk too much. Um, right. you, you know, and they start in on this conversation. Here's what's bad. You know, and, and feedback, you know, there's research that um, when you start to give someone feedback, that it's the same response in the brain as if you held a gun to their head. Wow. You know, so um, I, I always tell my leaders, do you know what goal they have? that the change you want will help them achieve. It can't just be what you want or the organization wants. You have to let them know, I'm here to help you achieve your goal. You know, whether they wanna be a leader, if they wanna be more credible, seen as credible by their peers, if they want even just less stress, you have to go in saying, I know you have this goal. What you're doing is keeping you, sabotaging right. that goal. I'd like to help you achieve that. Would you be willing to have this conversation? So you have to go in with, I do care about you and achieving your goals. Um, and I'm here to help you to do that. It has to be that intention as well as the words. 
Yeah, and yeah, and I can see that because let's face it, our experience, our life experiences of receiving feedback, we either don't remember whether whenever we have been given good feedback. I mean, we certainly remember all the bad feedback. So I think instinctively, as you instinctively were, if you say, "Well, John, you know, I'd like to talk to you about something that'll give you some feedback," I'm going to go, "Oh, what have I done? This is going right. to be good." My boss used to always call me and say, you know, you need to come to my office. And then he'd give me something good. And I'm like, why didn't you just say that over the phone? I was so stressed the whole time. So, but yeah, yeah, we tense up, um, figuring that, that it's not, that we're going to be made wrong and, uh, and feel badly uh, over the situation. So when they say, you know, people love feedback. No, they don't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, unless they ask for it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and even in the moment, you know, if they've done, just done something like presented to a, a, a clients um, or made a presentation, um, don't give them feedback right away because they're raw, you know, mm -hmm. just say, you know, hey, would you like to talk about what happened uh, tomorrow? We can go over what was good, what you might do better the next time. That's far better than stopping them right there. They probably know what they did wrong. They don't need you to like dig in. Uh, yeah. to that so yeah you have to be very careful with that feedback yeah and i guess part of it is uh if you're giving feedback or providing uh, having difficult conversations i mean a lot of this is is really coaching in many ways isn't mm -hmm. it and and most people are not trained in what coaching is or how to coach right and and to be honest most leaders aren't they've never been taught how to how to coach and, and what you've been talking about right now is exactly is where we just take our previous experiences and we just go, okay, listen, the best thing is if I just tell you all the things that you didn't do right or how I would have done it and you take that on board, everything will be great. Right, right. I think that's called either leading or mentoring. And it's mm -hmm. definitely not coaching, you know, yeah. where I'm helping you, smart person, figure out what it is you need to do to achieve your goals. You know, and, and I can always tell, I, I work in a lot of different countries and I don't, they don't have to be speaking my language. I can tell if they're coaching or not because who's doing most of the coaching. And if it's the leader, then they're not coaching. You know? exactly. So, yeah. yeah. And that's interesting because I mean, I see that you have, uh, you have uh, uh, worked in many countries and, and so, so culturally it, it translates across all cultures. So it's a human behavioral thing. Uh, it, would you say that, um, this idea of, you know, we set up this kind of hierarchy, I'm talking down to you, giving you feedback or whatever, and therefore you are in a, you are not in the best position, right? To receive it. Right. Well, you know, I think it was in, in, uh, whatever terms that they came out with leadership that that most leaders think that's what they're supposed to do they're supposed to be the one who knows and you don't know so i need to tell you you know when i teach coaching skills which i do to leaders all over mm -hmm. the world i share with them i always say are you willing to give up being the one who knows in order to be the coach can you give up being the expert um, and, and the know-it-all, um, because you're going to have to do that. And, and that's a vulnerability for them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're like, I just don't know, especially if they're a young leader and think they need to establish their credibility. And I say, do you know how much respect that you're going to get if you actually listen to people instead of try to tell them what to do, especially if they have more years of experience than mm -hmm. you? So it's, it's a belief um, around what is leadership. Uh, that I see has been, uh, you know, maybe it worked some years ago when people expected to be told, but it doesn't work now, especially not with yeah. the younger generation. And I think especially, is, and here's, here's an interesting phenomenon that we've been seeing a lot of recently is that uh, traditionally we had jobs and you could put a job description together for a job and you could post it and hire somebody from mm -hmm. the the everything has gotten so specialized and complex now that it's really hard and some of the job some of the jobs and things that you need done there's never been a job like that before right yeah. so right. so you can so you absolutely do not have the skills or could not mm -hmm. do that you have to find somebody who who does and therefore to your point you have to be a lot more comfortable with working 
and and mentor coaching people who actually can do something that you can't do yeah and to say i don't know i don't know your job you know i was asked today um well when you coach leaders do you have to have any knowledge of their industry and i'm like no (laughs) because Yeah. I'm just coaching them to help them think through their issues. I'm a thinking partner and they're so wrapped up with everything they have to do. They don't have time to stop and reflect. And um, uh, yes, I've worked in a lot of different uh, industries prior to being a coach when I worked for companies. Um, but even now, I, it, it's, it's pretty much all the same issues anyway <laughs> when it comes to people. Um, so I, as long as they're open to exploring how they think, um, then it really doesn't matter what industry they're in. So it's the same thing when leaders deal with these experts. It's like, I don't, to, to, to say, I don't know how to do your job, but I can help you get along with your team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, and help facilitate how you can contribute to the organization project or whatever, exactly. whatever that is. Mm-hmm. I can help you achieve your goals. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. And I think so. That's a that's a great point for everybody to, to take away, because if somebody approaches you like that and says, I'm here to help you achieve your goals, to help you get what you want for you mm-hmm. to be successful. Right. That's a lot that's a lot yeah you're going to be you're going to react so totally differently to that because you're going to go oh wow number one you probably haven't heard unfortunately you probably haven't heard that too many times before no but it does diffuse the defensiveness yeah absolutely. yeah right right yeah no it's too bad we don't hear that more (laughs) and so what are some other things that uh what are some other ways that leaders can help uh help you and as you say because you say about the difficult conversations because you still have to have difficult conversations and that's a and i could get into a whole other conversation about how the pendulum has swung so far over that it's everybody expects to be happy all of the time right And, (laughs) and, and your job as a leader is to make you happy all the time it is but so you still have to have those dis- difficult conversations um, yeah. so what are some other things you can do to make that as effective as possible yeah well you know i'm not so sure that everybody wants to be happy but they do want to know that they're contributing in a significant yeah. way they'd like their work to be meaningful and it doesn't mean that they have to be saving the planet or people but that their their contribution has value so all of us humans we want to be seen as individuals, we want to be acknowledged and we want to know that, that, that we're of value. And so when the leader shares that, that here's um, the contribution you do make, or it's possible, you know, that's why we brought you in, because we know that you're capable of making this contribution, which is going to help all of us, um, to let us know what is the significant thing that we do um, uh, and to really recognize whatever effort uh, we've been making um, that that is goes such a long way and and when I think wow this person really sees me because again you know we walk by people in the hallways these days and don't even remember yeah. it's like oh yeah I passed that person you know we don't see people and yeah, it's yeah. so critical that we just notice that we just notice and and little things you know if I notice that you you, you took a little time to help this person with their project that you notice that 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 is so important so it's not like we have to have big pizza parties and all of that but if we can just um acknowledge the humanity in each other that goes a long way goes yeah. a long way yeah. so maybe when you're walking down the corridor maybe you kind of lift your nose out of your phone occasionally Would be good <laughs> <laughs> it's a really yeah. good Thing. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, and I think the other thing is sometimes that uh, I think organizations and, and leaders and even managers don't spend enough time uh, actually helping people understand and connect what they do to the overall strategy of the company. Oh so you're absolutely right that they should be doing that with their entire team mm-hmm. um, as well as each individual. You know, here's how you fit in the, in the picture. You know, in my last company, it was really interesting because we had to do this entire organizational shift and, and, and we were preparing to go public. And we had this finance game that we were playing um, with people that helped them to recognize how they fit into the finance picture. So mm-hmm. we put even the factory workers through it and they learned things like the difference between... Um, 
uh, profit and revenue, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. cash on hand. We didn't really have that. We were making yeah. a profit, but how the decisions they make may fit into the future success. So even understanding how they fit into the financial puzzle of a company was so important that they re recognize uh, mm -hmm. the value of, of their work, not just, you know, uh, the end result, the end yeah. result. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had, a, I had an interesting experience at uh, one company I, I was running where uh, the, obviously the salespeople are commissioned and everybody knew about that, but there was the operational, the support staff, I had them, I set up a program where they would get bonus at the end of the year on our, if we exceeded our profit targets, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so then they suddenly all started looking at ways of saving money. Right. and ways of being more efficient and even better they started questioning the salespeople about the margins they were getting which is kind of it was kind of the whole yeah, knock-on effect right. was quite phenomenal yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. but but suddenly you have everybody connected right yeah 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 skin in the game <laughs> <laughs> definitely yeah. Yeah. So in the last few moments we have, uh, what are what are just some other things, uh, just another quick thing that you would advise leaders to do in order to be able to uh, communicate better with their, their people? Yeah. Well, a lot of what we're talking about is, uh, you know, I said the emotions and the mm -hmm. words they choose. Um, but it really is that being present. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, that you know you said lift up their heads but you know so like i i do this exercise where i say so what is it that people normally feel at work okay i want you to listen to people feeling that way you know and it's anxious stress frustrated overworked okay so they, they even if they're looking at you when they're feeling that they're not really there um i'm but i say so what is it you want people to feel and they're like well interested in what i have to say and curious well the thing is, is that when they switch to be curious and interested, all of a sudden it's like they turn their bodies, <laughs> they look mm -hmm. at the person, they shake their head, you know, and so they're like fully present. So can you, even if it's just a hallway conversation, can you be present to me in that moment? Even, and if you can't say, I'd love to be present with you and I can't right now because of this, can we reschedule? So yeah. it, it goes beyond emotions. It truly is a full body physical presence um, that people are hungry for. And I think that's a, that's a phenomenal one to end on because I do think that it's a, it's a, dying, it's a dying art, a dying skill yeah. uh, because people were getting so used to sort of multitasking, which I think is just doing a lot of things badly, but that's my own personal yeah. opinion. Um, and, and so it's like, I could be, oh yeah, yeah, Marcia, that's, that's yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. listening to you, but I'm also, I'm also over here. And I just think it's a dying skill that where oh, we are is. trying to, where we're actually present. And I think it's something that we have to relearn. We, we do have to, it's a big part when I teach coaching skills, it's a big part of it. You know, I always say, um, uh, you know, don't coach people from your desk, you know, because mm -hmm. exactly that, it's like you're gonna start looking at yeah. your screen. <laughs> oh, I have to just answer this quick email. <laughs> and you can't, you can't yeah, listen to people when you're answering. No, and, and all of these devices, are so, they're such narcissists because they're always saying, look at me, look at me, look at me, I and know. we give in to them. <laughs> Well, listen, um, listen, Marcia, this has been great. Before we go, I'd just like you to tell people a little bit more about yourself, how they can find out more and what you do. Yeah, sure, sure. My website is outsmartyourbrain.com. And I have a blog there that I blog a lot about these things on. Uh, and I have, uh, you know, The Discomfort Zone. It was my latest book, the one we've been talking mm -hmm. about. But I have a new book coming out next year on coaching. So I'll be blogging about that. And like, how can you do this easily? Coaching isn't this really difficult thing. It really is about just listening, summarizing, and being curious. So uh, that's a lot of my work, is working with leaders and coaches to... Uh, to have a coaching approach. You don't have to be a coach, but have a coaching approach to conversations. So um, look me up. I'm on LinkedIn uh, and everywhere else um, yeah. and happy to connect. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and your, your biography, et cetera, will be on, on sales pop and your book will be right. available there. Right. And uh, yeah, I would highly recommend people look at it. And I mean, I'm looking forward to your coaching book because I'll tell you, I honestly believe mm -hmm. coaching is 
one of the most underrated, undervalued, underutilized skills, mm. and it's a game changer. It really is a game changer when it's is. done right. So yeah. I think uh, I would recommend that people look out for your coaching book. Yeah, thank you. Right. <laughs> yeah, so my name is John Golden, Says Pop Online, Says Magazine, Pipeline SRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Great, thanks.